your feet. These men are angels straight from God and just touching this city's dirt, they still require their feet being washed. Stop thinking that the world's not going to affect you and you can just go on and, and be a good little Christian and never go to church and never fellowship and never get serious about this stuff. You're always going to need to be washed by the water of the Word. You need the Word of God in church to cleanse this junk off you that gets on the best of them. Hallelujah. Lord, come into my house. Let me, let me, please, I'm, I'm begging you, let me wash your feet and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Notice the angels weren't trying to escape the sin. They said, no, we're going to stay, we're going to stay all night out here on the street. It's going to blow, blow your hat in the creek. Tony, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You know what that means? Stop trying to look for a better neighborhood if you can't live for Jesus where you're at. The reason it's a ghetto is because you're not living for Jesus where you're at. And my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I will hear their prayers. I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. Every ghetto on the face of the earth is because Christians ran away from it. Hallelujah. And they said, Behold, now, my Lord. Now, let me tell you something. They're there for what? They're bringing the judgment of God to this city. They, ain't the least bit, they are not the least bit afraid to sleep in the streets. In the middle of the most sinful city on the face of the earth. Why? Because they got the power to come with them. You run because you don't own your power. You back up because you listen to the Lord. Are you ready? And he said, Behold now, Lord, turn in. They said, No, we're going to stand in the street tonight. Verse 3. And he pressed them, he begged upon them greatly. Please, what? why was he pushing? Because he knew what a sin-soaked mess he lived in the middle of. He wasn't stupid. He knew this place is soaked with sin. I don't want these two angels out here in the middle of all this sin. Didn't bother the angels at all. Why? Because the angels have the power. You'll get all upset over your neighbors and everything because you don't know the power. If you just go out on the front porch, go Hallelujah! Let's not throw beer bottles down the street. If you just go out in the park and say, Praise God, thank you, Jesus, glory be to God, the most high God, the living master of the universe, praise the Lamb of glory. And stop offering your crack. That sin only sticks to you as long as you keep your mouth shut and listen to the roar. Trust me, I know. Open your mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed! Hallelujah! All the sin can't touch me! Thank you, Jesus! They're not going to come up and ask you, Hey, Mama, how much? Uh, happens to me all the time. Everybody that knows me at work knows exactly what I stand for. I don't preach to them. I don't preach at them. And they'll say something, oh, sorry, Rev. What are you apologizing to me for? You know, I'm not afraid to say in front of God. And that's exactly what I tell them. I change the atmosphere because I open my mouth. I'm not afraid to be in the street. Are you getting this? Hallelujah. And he begged upon them greatly, and they turned in to his house, and entered into his house, verse 3, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, listen, 
The rumor, I'll read that out. Then all you got to do is stand for Jesus a little bit. Everybody in the neighborhood is going to be, you know, a hundred people, hundreds of people around here all call me Rev, and they've never been to this church. How'd that happen? Because the word gets out very quickly what you stand for. You can walk up and down the streets, walk in and out of your workplace, and go, I didn't know you were a Christian. Shame on you. Because it gets out clear. All you got to do is just open your mouth a few times. Oh, he's one of them. And it affects them because even though they can't explain it, even though they know they don't know how, they know you've got the power. Takes the whole neighborhood. Everybody out here. Hey, Rev. Hey, Rev. Hey, Pastor T.C. Hey, Rev. Have you been in my church? No. But so and so told me. So and so told me. So to all the community, what I stand for, what I'm about, and they've never set foot in here. Why? Because it shakes them up. You see how Satan treats you? You better be clear to the ground. You better walk in haste. You better back up. You better stop. You better slow down. You better listen to the Lord. It's so all to get you in the brain to give up on the fact that you've got the real power. You see, the roar, has, the roar has never killed it. An antelope, a bear, a, a gazelle, a, a, a zebra. The roar never killed one of them. It was stopping because of the roar that got them killed. Hallelujah! Amen. I know you're tired. Let me speed up. <clears throat> they came into his house, verse 4. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, surrounded the house, both old and young. Old and young. All perverts. All sin-soaked psychos showed up around Lot's house. The whole city. Every man in the city, thousands of them, over to Lot's house. Why? Because the word got out. You know what the word was? Not, hey, there's two angels. God's going to have a meeting. There's innocence. Let's take it. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something that's going to help you a lot. Beauty, beauty, to the wrong spirit becomes lust. God creates beauty. The person with the wrong heart, oh, i got to say this gently so that nobody gets offended. Let, let me look at this. A godly person can look at a 17-year-old virgin girl that's pretty and say, what a beautiful young lady. But to the rest of the world, she's baked. I gotta be first. I gotta have it first. I gotta get it. Because beauty is always perverted into lust if the heart's wrong. Beauty is of God. Lust is of hell. You can take a perfect, pure virgin and it's nothing but a target of lust when the spirit is not God. So you can do everything right, and you're nothing but a target to everybody with the wrong heart. And they've got to destroy it. They've got to deflower it. They've got to pollute it. They've got to bring it down to their filth. That's the nature of hell. Did you get that? So the beauty that God creates in you instantly becomes a target of the demons of lust, because they've got to drag you down to, and pollute you to their level. It's some, they, they claim it. They, they, that's what lust, I, I, I've got to pollute this. That's why every demon in hell is after you and every brother and sister in the world is for higher and pure with God. That's why it's so hard. Amen? Amen. What? Before they lay down, all the old men and the young men, every one of them came to his house. Verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men? Where are those? We heard two really beautiful men came to your house. 